Okay, this chapter is on bathrooms and kitchens. Inspecting bathrooms and kitchens. As you can imagine, uh, this is important because it has water in it. Any room that has water in it all the time is a room that, first of all, you could have leaks, stains, and damage, but you could also have mold. So we have to be uh, aware of it. Water is the enemy of the house, whether you're running to it outside because of the grade, because of the roof, because of the gutters, or anywhere inside, but because of all the different fixtures and pipes running through the place. Um, let's look at page uh, 203, which shows the list of the general interior items. And then next to it is all the items that we're going to be inspecting at in the bathroom. We have sinks, walls, wall sinks, vanity, pedestals, toilets, ventilation system, which can either be window or fan. We have fixtures, which can be uh, your uh, vanity uh, or showers, so the shower and tub, supply and drain lines. One of the things New York State law asks us to do is perform functional flow tests. It differs from the way the, in, the industry associations used to do functional flow tests. The, one of the differences in our law is that the industry, uh, Nachi and Ashi, et cetera, asked for a functional flow test in every bathroom, but, uh, but they, they only wanted one bathroom in each house in New York State, and it's one of the few exceptions difference between the state and the associations, is New York State requires a functional flow test in every uh, in every bathroom. So be aware that every bathroom you have to go in on a functional flow test is turning on the faucet, turning on the shower. I always run my shower, not the bathroom, because I want my client to witness water pressure, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're testing the water pressure in the house. So I turn on the, the sink, I turn on the shower, and I go over and I hit the toilet. And I wait for the toilet. Now, don't turn on the hots because the, the, all three of those we want uh, coming from the cold because the bathroom's cold. I want to look for any low pressure. And then I hit the toilet. I wait for the, the supply side of the toilet to uh, start kicking in. And then I watch my sink. And I watch the shower to see if they appreciably go down or the pressure is low. Anybody want to hazard a guess as if it's low pressure what I do? Who said it? Jason. He did? You're pointing at him? You you said that, right? No, he did? Okay. Yes, write it up would be good, but what do I want to do before that? I would have picked on you, but I'll let the new guy go. Okay, writing it up is very good. Okay? Jason, what else do I want to do? It's your turn. What else do I want to do besides write it up? What else do I want to do besides take a picture? Now we're talking about, I have found that I don't like, I'm not comfortable with the pressure, so I'm going to report it as being insufficient. Or I want to report it as being notify insufficient. Client. Huh? Notify the client. Now I'm not only going to notify him, I'm going to have him stand there next to me. And I'm going to perform it again, and then I'm going to let him tell me what he thinks. Does it really matter what I think? No. There's no shower that gives me enough pressure. I like it hot and I like it blasting, so every shower would fail. But my client, based upon some s kind of soft things, based upon how much he wants this deal. He or she. Or she, sorry. <laughs> You're right. No matter how much he wants this deal, no matter whether he plans on moving into the house next week or next month, or all the variables that are a part of his decision making. I want him to tell me that that pressure is too low. And I can turn it on and I'll explain what I'm doing and I hit that, that flush of that toilet and as it comes, and that little shower drains down and there's a little dribble coming from it. And he looks at me and says, oh, that'll probably be okay. That's all I need to hear. Okay? I don't care. I mean, I do care, 
But my, why, why am I subjecting what I would find? When, why not let the client, why not let the client and his wife decide as to whether that pressure is okay? And I bring them in there and I show them that and I watch their reactions. And some say, oh my God, we can't, that, that's terrible. What do you think is causing it, Dan? Well, now I know how I want to write it up. And then he said, looks at the same, another client will look at the exact same thing and says, Wow, that's great. I love that. I can't wait to get that. Also tells me how I'm going to write it up. Because I don't believe I should be putting my sub subjective opinion, subjective opinion or unbiased opinion. Anyway, I don't believe my opinion is what's really at stake here. I believe how he feels about it is what's going to keep him uh, either happy or taking me to court. How would you actually write that up? Let's say, for instance, in noted that, insufficient water pressure uh, during well flow, uh, um, um, functional flow test. Uh, this may be caused by old pipes or weak supply. Recommended qualified contractor repairs necessary. Even if they say it's great. Even oh no, no! If he says it's great, I'm going to say perform, uh, performed uh, uh, in the checklist. I'm not going to write anything up. I'm going to. Uh, uh, in the checkbox, I'm going to say perform the functional flow test, and there was uh, uh, acceptable uh, uh, loss of pressure. Okay. So, so there's nothing to write up if he says it's great. It's just unless he's so <coughs> crazy that I that I still am nervous. But you could have a bad supply in one bathroom and a and a good functional flow test in another bathroom, and now we have a function of the of the pipes, and it could be that some pipes were replaced and the galvanized in that part of the house wasn't replaced. So if you've got the shower going and you flush the toilet, turn the sink on, and you lose all the cold water in that shower, and that shower goes immediately to 120 degrees, isn't that what you're checking? That's exactly right. But uh, I don't do that. I don't have both going at the time because I want to see what happens to the cold water. Only the cold water, because only the cold water can I get all three appliances to test. But that's going to tell me about my pipes, and it's going to tell me about my pressure. Yes, that's a safety issue. I mean, I wouldn't want a, a mother standing there giving their five-year-old kid a shower because he just got, and she's got the, uh, the cold, wa the moderate water on, and all of a sudden the water goes boiling, and, and, and because somebody had played around with a hot water heater. I don't know how they're going to use it. So, yes, there is a safety uh, element to that. But let them be the judge, and you then use your discretion. If he says it's great and it seems still still seems to be a little weak, a casual comment of uh, unacceptable uh, pressure isn't going to sour the deal, and it may be counter to what he said. But use your own judgment. But I always let my reaction or my client in for, kind of give me a little bit more information before I just willy nilly write it up one way or the other. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying that. Then I think about maybe you should always put a comment, even if they say it's it's okay. Because I mean, if it's that bad. Well, now you now okay. Now you if you use that logic, now you're going to be doing that everywhere in the house. Now your report's full of shit. Well, not necessarily. I mean, you you know. No, you just said even if it wasn't defective, you're going to call it out as a defect. Well, no, no, no. We're not talking about. We're talking. But that's why you just said. You, we said in the beginning. That right. water pressure getting low would is typically a defect. You said what you do is you bring in your client and use their discretion in order to determine. But it doesn't override mine if I think it's they're really off base. But I will let it guide me as to what I'm going to do and the language I'm going to use. I'm not in the pro, I'm not in the business of inventing defects where none exist. I'm in the business of trying to give as accurate a report on the house as I can because that's my credibility. So, yes, I always want, like in the fireplace, I always want to find the defect, but I'm not going to invent it. And did that answer it, or did I just sidestep it? Kind of side, you kind of sidestepped it. Oh, well, good. Then I did good. Okay. <laughs> that's, where we're, that's where we're going to leave it, okay? Well, I'll get back to you in a no, minute. No, that's fine. Okay. We're good? Yeah, we're good. Even though I didn't answer no, because I'm going to write it in anyway. Just You're going to write it? That's the nice thing about I'm this. It's it your own anyway. freaking business. Do what you want. And I'll follow you around and call you an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to worse. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it's running wrong. If it's a major, major drop-off in all bathrooms, 
could that become a major? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, all the galvanized pipes. Of course, the, the, the plumber's not going to go in there and replace all the galvanized pipes with copper. He's going to take all the horizontal out first and see what happens. And then up, upgrade it. Now that PEX is being used, man, that's, that crap's gone and PEX is being run everywhere. So it won't even be a major problem. Well, that's what I mean. Can you... If, you're, oh, if, you're trying a, to... if I have a system-wide, house-wide, it... it Remember the language. It may be in excess of fifteen hundred dollars. How do I know he's using PEX? Maybe he's an old timer that says copper or nothing. I don't know. I'm not going to prejudge. Oh, well, I I price that based on PEX, and I guarantee you he can find four guys that said, well, you're 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 negligent if you're running your supply lines with anything other than copper. So since I'm not going to wade into that battle, I'm just going to write it up. <clears throat> Anything else? Oh, that was a long discussion of functional flow tests. That's where I left off. GFI outlets. Of course, uh, uh, GFI outlets in a bathroom or a kitchen is uh, extremely important. There's a lot of variables to looking for GFI outlets. We'll have that conversation on GFI outlets. But there's an argument to be made you shouldn't put outputs in the shower unless it's a GFCI, and some would say never in there, but just a hint uh, in terms of where the conversation will we go to GFCI, which will actually be next, next Tuesday night. That'll be fun. Heating lamps, and then of course heating lamps, turning them on, turning them off, making sure they're actually working. So that's the bathroom inspection. We can go through what we do in a bathroom, uh, but let's talk about then the kitchen. Um, so everything that is in the general interior, and we still have ceilings, walls, floors, doors, outlets, windows. Then we have in a bathroom, to set all those things, plus ventilation system, fixtures, showers, and tubs. And then in the kitchen, we have all of the things that are in the bathroom and the general interior. And then we have uh, all the kitchen things that are there with uh, dishwasher, kitchen cabinets, drawers, um, sink, supply, drain lines, GFCI outlets, all those same things. Which is also, in my mind, the most important inspection in the house is the kitchen. Anybody want to hazard a guess as to why the kitchen is the most important inspection in the house. And I mean that literally. I'm serious. Even more important than the electrical inspection. Because that's what food's in. Should I make fun of him yet? Has he been here long enough? No. No? Okay. No, nice it. answer, but I, I'm, not, <laughs> I, I'm not in love with the answer. Most common area used. Most common area used. Wrong. Another <laughs> new guy. It's the reason you buy a house. No, dry basements are the reason for the dry houses. <laughs> it is a factor in this, but isn't it true these days that more people buy houses based upon the wetness or the dryness and the condition of the basement? Oh, yeah. It's the biggest... That's what, what'll kill the put them at ease or scare them to death. Yes, exactly. It, it used to be the kitchen, though, correct? Yeah. Ten years ago? Mm -hmm. The kitchen sold the house. Mm -hmm. But today it's a dry basement. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Anybody else besides most used area and food preparation zone? Most expensive room in the house? Most expensive room in the house. So wrong. Three for three. Three for three. Now, anybody that does know my answer, go ahead and want to give it to, or nobody here knows what my answer is. I don't want to record me saying it. But. Okay, no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to, oh, because it's anti-realtor? No, no. Oh, I thought you were going with the answer on page 209. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not reading that in front of that. 209, the answer is yes. There it is. Right there. Well, all you've done is prove that you will occasionally read the book. And I don't even think you did. I think he poked at you and he made you say I, I read a couple months ago. I circled it. Did you really? Yeah. Why does that ring a bell to you? Why is that important to you? Since you circled it, why did you circle it? Because my wife would kill me if I ever typed that. Uh, 
It's a new world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a new world, buddy. It's the most important room in the house. And that is because of the realtors hanging out there. They get their first look at you, their real look at you, is because they all stand in the kitchen, correct? And they're all standing around and they're busy with each other and other realtors' literature is on the table and they're sitting there talking about the meeting they had Tuesday or when the last time they saw each other or the latest event they were at. And they're standing over here, always in the way, so you got to keep moving them out of the way and they'll move over there and pretty soon you're over there. They don't just go stand in the living room while you're doing the kitchen and then you leave and then they come back to the kitchen. No, they have to find the other part that you haven't inspected to stand. It's like karma. Anyway, two things happen in the kitchen. First, the realtors will watch engage you or judge you. They'll be watching out of the side of their eyes. They all have their own favorite inspectors, but that doesn't mean that they don't notice other inspectors. They are either looking for what an idiot you are or how good you are because they have a deal right now that in many cases hinges on you. So that means it's check in hand, and they're looking to see if, they, if, if you're a competent inspector or not a competent inspector. I remember when I was brand new, I did a, a, an inspection for Bill Hart, who was the first realtor that ever used me, and his daughter Nikki Hart, who has since passed, um, um, was at an inspection, the two of them it was their listing, and she was standing there, and I was doing my first townhouse or condo uh, over in East Greenbush. It was a townhouse. And I was in the kitchen opening and closing every door and running the water and going up and count the, uh, the, uh, the cabinets and then trying to the, the uh, countertops. And I was going through everything that I could possibly do to find a default on that, in that. And later on, when she showed back, she didn't say anything to me then. Bill told me later on that when she walked back in, she says, he's the craziest man I ever saw. He tried every cabinet and slid every kitchen. And the only thing she cared about was that kitchen. The only th comment she made was, I, I did things in the kitchen she'd never seen in her long three years. She, she, I did things in the, her, that kitchen that she'd never seen a home inspector do. Open drawers, open cabinets, and run water? Now who's that an indictment of? She was indicting all the other inspectors. Because the real reason that I think that besides that's where the realtors uh, make their judgment on how competent you are, is um, that's where the wife's opinion of you will go. Let's just say you don't do something you should have done and she's unpacking on her very first day in the house and she unpacks her grandmother's best china and she goes over to this brand new sparkling kitchen and she just can imagine how great it's going to be to cook Thanksgiving Day dinner in this room and she's got her grandparents china and she's going to put on with all whole family over and they're all going to ooh and all over her brand new house because people are in love with the house they move into or they wouldn't be there and she opens up the cabinet door and she takes a stack of six plates and she puts them up there and she turns around and that cabinet just collapses on the floor and destroys her grandmother's dishes. Guess what she's going to do? She's going to be really pissed at you. Now, that's not enough on its own to take me to court because it is a non-intrusive inspection. But what do you think her opinion is going to be when the husband comes up and says, Wow, I can't believe there's a leak in that basement. I mean, in the pipes. What do you think? Whose side do you think she's going to be on? Let's sue the bastard. And they'll find something in that freaking house to sue me on because now the tone has been set that I'm an asshole. So we... We take the biggest risk of what we do when we're in the kitchen. So make sure you do a thorough job because that fam that's the room, like you say, is the most commonly used room. But so what happens in the most commonly used room? Things can go wrong. So you need to make sure that if there is a defect there, you're all over that defect. And do lift those countertops up.
How many times have you run into it? Joe, how many times have you lifted a countertop up and it just lifted up? <laughs> it happens. Yep. And Not even on, and you'd be surprised, even on granite. Yep. The people, they rush. And you, you just it's amazing. Know. you got to follow that, the, the process that's been defined every single step. And I'm telling you, you'll, you'll be amazed. And what happens? Because if you miss anything in that kitchen, like Dan was saying, you miss anything, everything is questioned. Now they question everything. You've lost the confidence of it, yep. and that's because of those old people's china. It happens every freaking <laughs> And well, <laughs> majority of everybody goes in the kitchen the first thing. Yeah. Yep. And if you start opening up and things don't work, everything's down. And for the record, do everything you can to turn that water on as soon as you can, because those realtors standing there will notice that water is on and they'll all have to go to the bathroom. And one of them will say, you know, this house is on public water. Why are you running the water? There's no well flow test here. And I love that question because now he's just insulated, she or he has just insulated me from any problems with the plumbing because now it became a topic. And now I get to say to them, well, I'm changing, change, uh, checking and inspecting the drain side of the line. Yes, the supply line, as you well know, is under pressure, but unless I'm running through water through the drain line, it's never inspected. Don't your home inspectors run water the whole time? Huh. I do, because I believe I have to check the drain line. And you know what? There could be a tree growing in that root out there, or in the a root of a tree grows through the drain line going out to the city and plugs it up partially and it may take a half hour for that water to back back up into the house. I And trust me, I found that My daughter's house. 45 minutes after I started the water, the kitchen, uh, the bathroom, no, the basement utility sink started filling up with water. The whole basement floor up and then I, I dug the pipe all the way to the city. Sir. And it was partially blocked. There was So, but what I'm saying is running a couple uh, a gallons of water through it would have never showed that up. They know until uh, a month. That's exact. Oh, okay. So it wasn't discovered until after Slow it was too late. Slow drain lines. Slow drain lines. So when somebody says to you, well, none of the other home inspectors do it. Well, none of the other home inspectors are good, as good as you are. Run your water. And it's going to be easy not to. And the reason I like running my water, and the reason I like annoying the realtors with it, is then when they try and sue you because the, there was a leak in the system, you have all these realtors saying, oh yeah, the water was on the whole time, and I couldn't go to the bathroom, they were inspecting the bathroom, I had to go, yeah, Mr. Osborne always runs water. And I have had realtors come to me and says, oh, I ran into another one of your inspectors the other day. And I said, oh, really? Who was it? I, I don't remember his name, but he ran the water the whole time, so I know he was yours. <laughs> okay. On this page is the... Um, is the uh, kitchen inspection process. That's, that's typically the process I have that I use. And on back on page 205 is the bathroom process that we use. And I would advise you to develop a process. I'm not saying my process is the only process. What I'm saying is just be thorough. If you find your, if you take the time to develop a process for inspecting the kitchen and the bathroom, you're going to find that it's going to save you a lot of time, and you're also going to find that you won't forget things. So the first thing I always do when I walk into the room is I turn on my hot water tap, and we're going to talk about both the kitchen and the bathroom at the same time. Um, I'm going to turn on my hot water tap and let it run and uh, so I can determine that's hot. Any, anybody want to hazard a guess as why I'm doing the left hand faucet first? Okay, that's good, but that's not the only reason. Because you're going to burn the coal for the entirety? That's not even a good reason. Make sure the left hand's hot. Make sure the left hand's hot, that it's plumbed properly. It could be cold, and that doesn't mean that the hot water heater's not on. That means that they didn't run. The left is supposed to be the hot side. The right is supposed to be the cold side. 
So that means it's plumb. Now, and also, at the same time, I'm do, I am checking on the hot water heater. Once I have the hot water coming out of the left-hand faucet, I've now done two inspections. I've checked the plumbing in that room, and I've also checked whether the hot water heater is working or not, which is really great. Now I've got the hot water. And I've run into an instance, Dan, where um, the dishwasher was in the center island, and they had a small sink. Yeah. Um, tested the, the hot water, cold water was right, and then looked underneath, and they tapped the cold line to run into the dishwasher. So it was never getting hot? It wasn't hot water. getting hot. But it had a heater element in it. But so they, they, were, tapped, they, were, they, they were, tapped the right one instead of the left one. Yes. And they were burn, actually burning, had to replace dishwashers every couple of years because it was trying to raise the temperature. temperature. It had an element. Wow. So you've got to watch everything that people do. Oh, take, yeah. a, take a close look underneath. 3,000 inspections and counting, and I never once checked my uh, dishwasher as to whether it was tapped in right. What I do do, though, is I turn on my water, and I turn on the dishwasher, and I get the water flowing in the dishwasher. Now I look for the leak, because with that pressurized and running, it could leak then, but not with just the other pipes going. So I want to maximize all, and even turn on the disposal, and have that whole, that whole area there all operating. Then check for my leak, because just not leaking when I turn on the cold water doesn't really tell me there's no leaks. It just really tells me there's no leaks when there's no stress or pressure on the lines. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, so. When I walk into the bathroom and or kitchen, I always check the left-hand sink, make sure left-hand faucet, I make sure that's hot. I then turn on the cold all the way, and I take my flashlight and I look under the sink. Be sure to touch underneath the elbow, because I've had them where the top pipe was just set in there, and I went to touch it, and it just free went up and down. And so it wasn't actually properly attached, it was just set in that pipe. Um, and then once, pardon? <laughs> You've been in my house again. <laughs> I was just inspecting it last week. Your wife says I'm great, though. That's pretty good, because I don't have one of those. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, was that your girlfriend? <laughs> anyway, um, after I uh, uh, check the sink, and then if I'm in the kitchen, I'm checking all the, uh, I'll walk into, if I'm in the kitchen, after I've got that, the, because I, and the reason I check the sink first is I want my water running the whole time. So whether I do that before I start my kitchen or did, did it a couple, uh, 40 minutes ago when I went, it was going up the attic, I always go over to the sink and get that water on as quick as possible. And I always run through that routine of making sure the hot water's on, making sure it's on. I don't want to turn the water on and walk upstairs and find that that pipe, that uh, drain line has been moved over and now it's pouring water into the room and then I'm up in the attic discovering mold while I'm flooding the kitchen. That, that's just not good. That's not good. So uh, after I'm done setting that up, I start at the left-hand corner and I check all my cabinet doors. I check the, uh, the cabinet itself. I open the doors. You don't have to look inside. Just operate the door. And don't do it gently. I went into a home inspection one time that one of my uh, newly graduated home inspectors uh, was at, and he was in the house, and I walked in the house, and the realtor was outside talking on the phone. There was nobody in the house, and my inspector was in the house, and I didn't hear him. I was there for five minutes. I just stood there waiting. Never heard him. I wouldn't have known there was an inspection going on. He didn't have water running. He wasn't doing a thing that I knew of. Now, you don't have to always be loud, but one of the reasons why I like to be loud allowed is because we're doing an inspection. I'm running water. I'm checking and testing that house. I want it to sound like I'm working. Now I'm not saying go in and make stupid sounds, but when I'm down in the basement checking on floor joists, I have my screwdriver. I'm checking to see if my screwdriver goes through those joists. Do I have to do it a lot? No. Do I do it on every one of them? No. 
You might say I do it on a representative number, but I don't do anything quietly in the house when I'm inspecting. And the reason for that is trying to make sure everybody remembers that I inspected that house and not me. But the last thing I want is when they do have a problem and an attorney calls me and he says, are you sure you checked something? I don't want anybody saying, well, I don't know. I, I think he was there. The water, I'm not sure if it was running or not. I never saw him go into the bathroom. So I make sure everybody knows I'm in the house. Sometimes it doesn't matter because nobody else is there. But other times it does matter. Uh, they're standing around the kitchen trying to have a conversation, and I'm slamming a cabinet or a kitchen counter drawers. They're, of course, my, my my wife and my kids all say that I'm annoying, and that would probably qualify. But I also want to. Uh, I'm doing the job as well as I can, and I don't want to be as quiet as I can, because they didn't pay me to come in there and and not. You know, check everything out. So I'm not saying uh, being loud is an element of the inspection, but being loud is an element of your leaving the impression that you actually physically inspected that house and you did a thorough job. So when I go in to rooms upstairs, I don't mind closing a door a little loud. I don't mind banging in the basement on stuff. Okay, it's just an impression. It's just something on the side you might want to think about. Uh, so I go around and I'm opening up all the doors and then uh, uh, open up the doors around here and then I go back and do all the cabinets and then I get the island and I'm doing the drawers and everything there. Then I go start in on my appliances and I go into the stove and I turn on all the outlets on the uh, uh, all the burners on the top of the stove and I take down the stove's name mark down whether it's gas or electric, etc. The same with the refrigerator and the same with the dishwasher that's probably running out. I don't turn on that dishwasher if there's dishes or pots in it, but if it's empty, I will turn it on just so I can see whether there's a leak or not. And sometimes there is a leak in the seal at the bottom of it and water will pour out on the floor, so you want to check that. Appliance is something that we're not required to do, but that doesn't mean I can't do it, it just means I don't have to do it. I think it, it certainly serves you to be checking your stove and your dishwasher because I probably have had more calls about dishwashers than I've had about any appliance in the house. So I try and run those because uh, when she moves into the house, I, and I had a call one time, she, they moved in and the dishwasher wasn't working. And I remembered her. This was back when I wasn't doing as many inspections. So I did remember her. And I remember, and I said to her on the phone when she said that when she moved into the house, the dishwasher wasn't working. And I said, well, you were standing there talking to me when I was doing the kitchen inspection, correct? And it's about a month later. I pulled up the report and I looked at the pictures. And I said, don't you remember me standing there with the kitchen, the, turning the dishwasher on and we were talking about your son's baseball team or whatever it was? She says, oh, yeah. So... You have to do this. They're going to call you on it anyway, and if there's something going to fail, that dishwasher can very well be it. I've had more calls on that, and that front uh, uh, will leak because the gasket breaks on the inside. And remember, the closing may be two to three months after your inspection, and the people were living in the house. It's not going to stay in the same condition for those three months until the closing. So, um, so don't let a phone call shake you up. If you do the same thorough inspection every time of, of any element of the house, and you know you always uh, run your water, and you know you always turn on the dishwasher, and you know you always turn on the stove, and you have a pattern, then when somebody calls you and accuses you of not doing that, you're not sitting there questioning yourself, because you know you do it all the time. And that's something I'm religious about. I make sure my water's running the whole time I'm in the house. I want it. I don't, because that's the enemy of the house as far as I'm concerned. The most important things we do is I look in the attic for leaks in the roof. I look in the basement for leaks in the foundation. And I'm running around running all the water in the house trying to generate leaks. Because in the end, the water can be the most expensive thing we're dealing with. Even the septic system's expensive, but isn't that handling the water? 
so everything is uh, is um, affected by water in the house. So just do your consistent inspection all the time of your bathroom. A bathroom inspection is is so simple. You walk in, you turn on your cold hot water, you turn on your cold, you look under the sink, you touch the pipe, you put your GFCI outlet in it, you turn over and check the GFCI, you turn over, you turn on your bathtub. After the bathtub is running, you check the left and then you turn on the cold. You then see if you have a, a plug for it. And if there's no plug, you hit the diverter, make sure the shower goes, you walk over, you flush the toilet, you make sure it's up. If there's a problem, you call your client in, you're done. How long did that take? And the inspection is almost that quick. 45 seconds at the most to do a bathroom inspection. If you get in the habit of doing it exactly the same thing, one of the things that Joe and Jamie and I always preach is do it in order the way your checklist says, get in the habit of doing it the same way every time, and then your mind goes on autopilot when you're in the house and you're doing it the same way every time, then somebody says, did you check the diverter on the shower? Because when I moved into that, that diverter wasn't working. Well, if you've been checking diverters for 3,000 inspections, I think I probably remember yours. I don't remember doing it, but I'll bet you I did. And isn't that where we want to go? Establish a process. Do it the same way every time go into autopilot and then wait for something not to be right. And when something's not right, write it up. That's all you have to do. Don't go starting an inspection on the roof one time and then start it on the garage the next time and then start it in the basement the following time. Establish a routine. That way you will not miss anything. And then do the same routine when you walk into a bathroom and then do exactly the same routine when you walk not that routine but do an exact routine of all kitchens. Check your cabinets, your countertops, your sink, then go to the appliances, and then work on your checklist and get all the items. The last thing I do, and it's the bottom item on the kitchen, uh, is that uh, kitchen, uh, kitchen window. That kitchen window gets missed all the time. The window over the sink. Mm -hmm. Open it and close it. Knock it in. Yeah. On the GFCI, uh, on the older homes, you're, again, you're probably not going to have them in the bathroom or the kitchen. They're correct. So do you just put that down as a comment? And no, recommend? it's a defect. I'm going to write it up. But don't worry about those kind of defects. A, I can assure you 95% of all your clients don't run out and get an electrician and install it. And B, I'll bet there's never been a deal yet that ever got kicked or somebody walked from a deal because there was no GFCI in the kitchen. It just doesn't happen. So always remember the big picture when you're reporting on this stuff. And GFCI is a perfect example of something that, yes, you have to report it because it's a safety issue, but nobody's ever walked from it, from it ever because of a GFCI on a house. They're spending $300,000 and it may cost $70 to replace a, GF, a regular outlet with the GFCI. So, you know, keep everything in proportion. Write it up as a defect. You're not hurting the deal and you're protecting yourself from a suit. Okay? Anybody? Anything else? Kitchens, bathrooms? Establish a routine and do it the same way every time. Make your life easier. If there's no outlets, oh, I love reporting that. I said, do you use a dry blade or do you use an electric razor? And, he's, and he just has no clue where that question's coming from. Come here with me. Well, you know. Now, I did yesterday, and he just laughed and laughed and laughed because that was exactly it. Half bath with no electric outlet. And he said that that room at this bathroom because he was moving in with his girlfriend was going to be his refuge when he gets into the doghouse. And so I'm standing in the middle of his bathroom when he's in the doghouse. I'm saying, dry blade or electric? <laughs> and sure enough, he was electric. So it became an issue for him. But that was only a half bathroom. So again, nothing that's going to kill the deal. But they need to remember that you saw it. Now, if you didn't see it and they found it later on, it hurts your credibility. 
but then he's not going to know that you were actually looking for it. So in the end, 90 times out of 100, they're not going to care that you did or didn't, but they would have liked to have known that. So it shows your thoroughness and your professionalism to find things of that magnitude, which means not much magnitude at all. Would you write, um, probably wouldn't be a major, uh, no GFIs in the whole house. No, right. because for $70 a piece, I can get them changed out or I can change them out myself. It's not $1,500 and I would never do that even in the whole house. Don't look for a reason to piss everybody off. These people do want this house. The only time I would ever do that is if my client, client came to me saying, I, I, I can't get out of this house. I need a major desperately. I need to get my $1,500 deposit back. And then I made up, made, I didn't say this out loud, but I made majors up before just to help try and get my client out of the house. Because a lot of realtors will tell them not to get their inspection until after the attorney approval is over, correct? Yes. And guess what the only thing that's going to get them out of it then is the $1,500. And do they have to wait till after the attorney approval is over? No. No. And so why are they advised by the attorneys? Because, I mean, by the realtors to wait till after the attorney approval is over in case when they walk through the house, and I don't mean to be disparaged realtors, when they walk through the house, if they start seeing it with your eyes, guess what happens? They want to walk. And guess what happens if the attorney approval is over? Now you got to be the one to kill the deal. And they got bad advice. There is no reason in the world for them to wait till after the attorney approval to have the home inspection. How many times have I had a call coming in? Uh, Mr. Osborne, you were referred to me by a realtor. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, inspection, and I'm looking at next week because uh, my attorney approval period isn't over until Friday, so I'm looking at a Monday or Tuesday inspection. I'm going, you freaking idiot. Now I'm mad at the realtor for telling him to wait till after the attorney approval, but the realtor sent him to me. So it's kind of a love-hate thing. Well, in Go ahead. defense, he is a realtor, so he knows what he's talking about. Defense, in general, in general, if the attorney approval hasn't gone through, and they they can get another contract in, if another contract slides in, the attorney can cancel the first contract during the attorney approval process. If it hasn't hit the, if the attorney hasn't signed off on it, right, and then somebody else barges in and says, I want to pay you this, raise more money. And so they want to so the attorney, can, all they have to do is send send the other attorney. Well, why does that motivate them to keep the real inspector out of the house? <laughs> inspection. Waste huh? money on an inspection. Why do the inspection if you don't know 100% for sure you got the home? Oh, they don't know it's 100% until, until the, the, the attorney approval is over. That's an excellent reason. Nobody's ever told me that. That's a good reason. You can actually get another contract in. And How it, often does that happen? It actually, in this market, it's happening more than you would oh, believe. Oh, in a hot buyer's market? <laughs> yeah, no. because there's no, well, it's a hot market and low inventory. Multiple low offers. inventory, multiple offers. You, you so multiple it, doesn't, offers, it yeah. doesn't matter that's in the attorney approval process. You know what I mean? So Somebody that, else can So the realtor is really trying to save the client money for doing a home inspection <laughs> that somebody may come in and get in front of the line with them. Basically. Right. I mean, it, the other person may be bumped out, and then you are. You're destroying you're, this whole thing I have. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to tell the you the way it is. The realtor's being evil. <laughs> Speaking as a former realtor myself, you're giving realtors a little too much credit. Oh, <laughs> God. Did, I, did that answer get. Who asked the question? Uh, never mind. Anyway, anybody else? Any questions? A uh, question Is not having shutoffs under the sink? A defect? Uh, in my mind, it is. Oh, I write them up. Yeah, it's a defect. How important is it? Eh, uh, if there's a, a water calamity at that floor, now you got to run downstairs and find a, a valve to do it where it'd be awful easy to reach under there. I wrote up the other day, there were two valves, but they had the wood planking on the floor. It was a new ash addition, uh, in a new addition, and they cut a square out. and. I couldn't even get my hand down into underneath the board to turn on the valve because they made the floor of the cabinet higher than the cutoffs were underneath. Almost, un and if I didn't know where they were, I mean, I was looking for them. I can't even imagine the homeowner ever being able to find them. 
So I write that up. I don't think it's that big a deal. Probably doesn't happen that often, but I'm sure we could get three or four stories about how how uh, an upstairs bathroom sink got going crazy and they couldn't turn the water off until it cost ten thousand dollars worth of damage. I'm sure that's happened someplace, sometimes. So if it happens once, so I'm writing it up. They had uh, uh, flex uh, piping. Pex? No, flex. Flex bowl. Oh, okay. Plumbing piping. Oh, okay. Uh, underneath the kitchen sink on uh, Saturday. Yeah. Uh, would you write that up? I mean, it's doing its job. It's doing its job. It's, it's not the greatest. And I'm there. You're not the there judge. to judge craftsmanship. <laughs> you may well, do it something differently, but if it's functioning, right? But we would write up a dryer you hose. Would, we would you, write up a dryer hose. That's a known fire hazard. And I don't write up uh, write up dryer hoses unless I see creaks in it. And so if you read the dryer hose thing, so I need to but see. The flex hose also came off the garbage disposal too, so that's carrying uh, sludge. Okay, it's well, build an argument, make your argument, and it's always been my opinion. I don't always have to be right, but I have to have sound logic in why I'm writing something up, because the industry, all industries, electricians, plumbers, etc. Uh, have different stories on exactly the same item. Some will argue the fact that uh, sump pumps require GFCI, others will argue that it doesn't. Anytime I see a mix of the industry on the arguments, I know that either one I pick, I can find 10 professionals that say I'm right. The same would go for the plumbing. And just as Joe said. I didn't write it because it wasn't a safety and there was no uh, visible defect. defect. That's exactly right. Find your defect. And then once you found the defect that could be caused by that, or the possibility of being caused that, then have a field effect. But look for your defect first and then write it up. Was I sidestepped in there? Yeah. Okay. Good enough. I'm two for two on sidestepping. This house, this house we inspected Saturday had a, a main water pipe come in, go to the water meter, then went up the wall and they built a workbench around it. Huh. I just wondering. I didn't write that up either, but I wonder. I wouldn't write it up. Uh, how close was it to any electrical? Uh, you know, no, the panel was somewhere no, else? Yeah, the other side. Okay. Down the other side. No, just because was uh, the only thing I would just, is my main shot off within reach. It was under the workbench, right? Yeah, it was. The under. main shot off was, yeah. yeah. Okay, so if I can get to it. I think they have one above the two, didn't they? There were two. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if I can get to it and I have a reasonable expectation of being able to find it, then I'm not going to write that up. Don't look for problems in a house. Look for things that just aren't right. Remember, and certainly for all the new guys, we are not there to, uh, to judge it as to would we build it that way. We are there to judge whether it's defective or not. There can be a deck that is built in the strangest manner you've ever seen and wood's coming all over the place. But as long as it's not unsafe to walk on, and as long as it's not bouncing or moving, and as long as uh, the guardrail is okay and the safety rail going down the steps is safe, uh, there's nothing to say about it other than the fact that it was engineered in a manner that I would have done, built in a manner that I wouldn't have done. But just because it's a way you wouldn't have done doesn't make it wrong. The deck? Yeah. Yeah. Do they hang out there? Was there, the real question is was the deck on the MLS? I didn't see. If there well, it maybe wasn't for sale. The the common knowledge that I have is if it's on the MLS, then it's a part of the transaction, and yes, you should be looking at it. If it's not on the MLS, then it's not a part of the transaction, and nobody gives a shit. And I give a shit if my client asks me, hey, could you look at that shed out back? Or would you look at this deck? Or would you look at the above ground pool? Maybe the above ground pool wasn't even mentioned on the MLS. Maybe the shed wasn't mentioned on the MLS. If it's not mentioned on the MLS, then it's not a, a part of the sale, correct? If it's not a part of the sale, I'm not inspecting it. But if my client asks me to, I certainly will perform the function courtesy of taking a look at it and reporting anything obvious I see. It's a great line. I don't know if anybody's ever been sued for not inspecting something that wasn't on the MLS. But again, I'm back to, I can make an argument to why it wasn't a part of the transaction. It's not a part of the house, so I don't necessarily, 
an inspector. If that's a sound, it doesn't have to be what's right in the court, it just has to be sound logic. Then you had a firm footing in terms of the facts. It wasn't a part of the MLS, it wasn't a part of the transaction, and it certainly wasn't attached to the house. So, in my home inspection, where did I go wrong? If I can make a compelling argument in front of a jury, I'm probably okay. Because what do they have to prove? That I was negligent. That means there can't be a, uh, they can't be wavering about it. They have to prove I was negligent to take any money from me. Okay? And for me, not inspecting something not a part of the deal doesn't make me negligent. If it was a part of the deal and I didn't inspect it, now I'm negligent. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did I sidestep that one? No. Okay, good. <laughs> Two for three. I'd vote for you. Sixty-six oh. percent of the vote. <laughs> and, gentlemen, anything else? Politician. <laughs> I know. I slap with that. Anything else? Okay, gentlemen. Thank you very much. We'll see you next Tuesday.